Welcome back to Dave's Tech Table. Today we're going to talk about the basics of Adobe Encore and Blu-ray authoring. Before we get started, I thought I'd give you a couple of quick tips about media and burners. For media, you want to make sure you're using BDRE media. This simply means rewritable media. Now, rewritable media costs more, but in the end, it'll save you frustration and most of all, money. So keeping your projects within budget. You can burn the same disk over and over from project to project. I've actually been using the same disk for two years now. Now with that, you want to make sure you're using a trusted brand of disk. I've been using verbatim disk for years and they've really never let me down. So again, make sure you're using a high quality disk and start your projects off right by using rewritable media. Now also with that, you want to make sure you're using a trusted burner as well. There's a lot of different burners on the market and believe it or not, some of the newer media out there requires newer burners or at least updated firmware. As the cost of media starts to come down, the technology is changing and some of the burners out there don't understand how to write to the media. And again, if it's not written correctly, it may not play correctly on your player. So there are some issues there you wanna make sure you work out. Now with that, using a trusted brand like Digistore, this is a brand that I've used for years. Uh, this is their new slot load mechanism. This portable unit allows me to take it from my desktop to my laptop, works great on PCs and Macs, and Digistore has stood behind their products for years. I've been using them since they started working with CDs and DVD burners, and they've been a great company. Now, they also use high-quality Panasonic mechanisms in there, another brand that I know and trust, and they've just been outstanding. Now this unit also features a simple USB 2.0 connection, but better yet, it has an internal battery which allows for constant power for longer burn. So it's been a fantastic unit. So again, make sure you're using a brand of media and a burner that you trust. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into Encore and get authoring. There are two basic ways for creating output to DVD or Blu-ray for Encore. Using your nonlinear editor, in this case Premiere Pro, you can always go to the export menu and choose a Blu-ray or DVD export. So for Premiere Pro users, you would simply go to File, Export, Media, and you would choose a setting. In this case, you can see I've chosen MPEG-2 Blu-ray, and you would go ahead and set your appropriate screen size. For this particular video I'm working on, it's a 720p. 23976 video and I'm going to go ahead and choose the highest quality possible and Premiere Pro comes with presets for high quality. You can go in and adjust whatever settings you need to adjust down here. Now if you want to go ahead and choose H.264 for Blu-ray again you would use those if you have longer projects so anything longer than an hour I would go ahead and choose H.264 so you would choose H.264 and do exactly the same thing. Go ahead and choose your appropriate preset make any changes down here. I will give you a pointer and that is don't bother um, using two pass for H.264 because the single pass is very very good. DVD users can just go ahead and pick MPEG-2 DVD. Again choose your appropriate setting. Again if it's a standard NTSC make sure your frame rate's correct. Typically for NTSC users you're going to use uh, a progressive widescreen uh, high quality which is what I use. If you want to have an interlaced signal uh, you can go ahead and choose widescreen. Those are fine and again PAL users would use uh, the appropriate settings um, as well. And again I'll go down and choose my appropriate setting. And my default settings here are fine. Again all I really look for is the high quality setting here and the frame rate and the screen size. Click OK. That'll go ahead and launch Adobe's Media Encoder, and that will go ahead and encode in the background. And as you can see here, Adobe Media Encoder is encoding the video. Uh, MPEG-2 Blu-ray typically encodes fairly quickly. Now the much easier way for Premiere Pro users to create Blu-rays or DVDs is directly out of Premiere Pro by sending the timeline to Encore. So you do that by using dynamic links. So that's File, Adobe Dynamic Link, Send to Encore. Now what this will do is go ahead and scan all the media on your timeline, all the effects, and gather those pieces and get them ready for Encore. In here you'll see your authoring mode. You can choose Blu-ray or DVD. And again, make sure your dimensions are correct. Again, mine's a 720, 23976. And I'm going to go ahead and use an MPEG-2 codec. 
Again, for longer projects, you would choose uh, H.264. Now, it's good to note that the media has not been transcoded yet, so you don't have to wait. And I'll show you the benefit of this in just a second. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Encore is going to go ahead and start building out its cache folder and its sources folder to get ready for your media. And here you can see what it's done automatically is it's given me a new timeline and my new uh, sequence directly from Premiere Pro. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit wider so you can see what this is here. So this is telling me that this icon is a length Premiere Pro sequence. Now if I double click on my timeline, you can see that it gives me sort of a generic look here, which is sort of looks like Premiere Pro or any other nonlinear editor. I can go ahead and scrub the timeline, and I can see my media. I can go ahead and hit play. Disappears into shadow. And it'll go ahead and play my media as well. For those of you that are going to be importing your media clips, say from another nonlinear editor, you would just use the import command. So file import as an asset and go ahead and point it towards your asset. Now what you're going to notice is you're going to notice you'll have it an MPEG-4 file or an MPEG-2 file depending on how you imported your video. Now you could also have a standard MOV or an AVI file as well. We also support a lot of tapeless media if you're going to be using tapeless media like RED or other formats like that, you just want to go ahead down here and select All Files. All Files will show you um, all of the files again in that folder. And if we have an importer for it, uh, like we have an importer for the RED file, then that's how you go ahead and import that. I'm going to go ahead and just select both my video and my audio. And that will go ahead and import those. It's also the same steps for DVD. Uh, when you go ahead and use a manual export uh, and you go ahead and encode, again, using a Blu-ray setting or a DVD setting, it's going to create these two files. Now, the easiest way to automatically create a timeline is to shift select both the video and the audio and then right mouse click, go down to new timeline. That'll go ahead and create me a brand new timeline and import those assets into that timeline. And again, you'll see my timeline right here. So the video and the audio are lined up perfectly. It went ahead and named my timeline uh, DIBTS, again, double identity behind the scenes. So again, I have two timelines. Now you will notice there's a difference when you import it directly from Premiere Pro using dynamic link. You'll see it's pink versus when you do it manually, it'll show you video in this blue color and audio in the green color. Either way works. It really just depends on your workflow. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and jump back over to my original timeline and work from there. Now the next thing you might want to do is to go ahead and call up a menu. Now, again, you can go over here to your library. Uh, we have a bunch of sorter tiles here where you can sort different things. I can just look at buttons. I can look at images. I can look at just menus. And I also have categories uh, of menus. I can go ahead and select an entertainment menu and then just go ahead and maybe click uh, a menu here that I'd like to see. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this film menu. And that'll go ahead and give me uh, a real quick chapter selections. Um, I'll show you how to modify the menu in just a second. So the next thing you might want to do, I didn't have any chapters that were in uh, Premiere Pro, but it would have imported those chapters if I had them. I can go ahead and just click a couple of chapters here. Again, I can 